Hello everyone, this is Julie Edwards at Craftsicute and welcome back to my channel. And yes, I was um, missing in action for a little bit, uh, but no worries. It's because I kind of swerved over into another project that I'm doing. Um, let me pause you and let me grab what I want to show you. Okay. I have been taking just a tiny little sabbatical because this these swarms of ideas were coming in my head and I've been doing some ink drawings from this book here and it's a floral book with different flowers in here and I have been taking them and drawing them onto and onto um, mixed media paper so that you've got some beautiful flowers in here and I've been kind of like this one here this is really beautiful I think I'm gonna let me put a bookmark right here I think I'm gonna be doing this yellow flower but I've been going through that book and producing larger drawings of it here is this one beautiful rose um, I wish I had began these drawings in black ink versus blue so what I'm gonna do is um, take a piece of copy paper and then put this on the back light of my um, light board and then trace this in black ink so here's uh, that one and here's poppies this is a rose these are roses and then these are poppies I think no I think this is the peonies and this is a black eyed Susan, I believe. And then let's see what's over here. Okay, that's a blank page. And then I have this ink drawing that I did in black and white. Um, I was going to use it for to cover, use it as a cover, but I guess I drew it way too large for it to fit this journal. Uh, that's a blank piece. And, and what I did was I took it and under put this under on my my light board to trace this in pencil um, leaving this section blank here so that um, when I go to print it out um, it'll be a blank area where someone can write something inside of it and then I did this page of some loaves and fishes you know if you're familiar with the Bible when Jesus fed the multitudes it started off with five loaves and fishes and a couple of fishes five loaves and two fishes and then he multiplied it to feed um, the multitudes and then I have okay here is my doodle the doodle of that and I just took it on my black light and transferred it over because I'm gonna um, ink this up in black and or maybe sepia ink and I used my ink and quill so to make these drawings and let's see that's what those look like Okay, this is my doodle page. Let me get this out of the way. And then I have these um, watercolor paintings that I paid actual painted directly onto tea stained paper. And this is chicory. It's actually it's a beautiful flower, but it's a weed. And then. I have the rose it's 
see if you can see that. Yeah. On two stained paper. And this is the uh, Trumpet Vine. And here's a Black Eyed Susan one in the Daisy family, one of my favorites. Daisies are my favorite flowers. The long, long um, stemmed daisies, wild daisies that, you know, when the wind blows, they start bobbing their heads and swaying back and forth. And they just look like they're just having a party and dancing. Daisies are my favorite flowers. And then poppies. And then this is a, say, bull thistle. Oh, and that's my grandbaby's <laughs> little printout that I ended up writing on because she's no longer here. She lives in Kentucky. So my idea with these, you guys, is to, um, I'm going to put some in my buy me a coffee, but I'm going to also, uh, when I finish all of this up, whatever video I'm working on, I'm going to put a link below for a digital. So it's free. It's going to be free digitals. Okay. When I load a video, um, and I'm going to have some in my buy me a coffee, but I'm making a lot of these free. for you guys to have and that way when you go to transfer you can and it'll look end up looking like this okay that's a watercolor painting it's an ink and wash technique which I absolutely love okay and I transferred that onto this and I made two of these journals instead of one large journal I'm putting two notebooks in here so for me in my journal, I'll have volume one and two so that when I'm through filling these journals up, then I can remove them with the elastic band that's going to be attached to this, um, the Midori style. And then this one, um, I did start uploading a video and the cover was going to look like this, but I didn't quite like it. So I just turned it around and used it for the inside. And then on the flip side of it, I used this paper because I wanted something cohesive with this. I wanted something really substantial and that stuck out or stuck out. And my, my, I was going to put, I had this journal made for it. Okay. I did, like I said, upload another video, but it was way too long. It was an hour long and I, ugh, I'm just, my goal is to make videos under 30 minutes and I've not been successful. So I'm re filming right now and I'm sorry that you weren't able to see that process about making these, um, this cover. And I may have shown you this one, but I had already cut out my tea stain paper. Um, so that is, was going to be another note writing pad, but I thought I'm going to keep this as notebooks in here. And then I was thinking when, let me get into frame here, when you put your folder in here, I'm going to create an acetate pocket, I think, to keep, so you can keep. I can keep ephemera pieces or stickers that I want to use, you know, while I'm in my journal and I'm like, oh, I like that sticker. I'll put it here or um, I'm going to make like these signature cards that will have like for scripture writing. Um, and then I'll have a bunch of those. And that way, if I take out a blank card with this beautiful ink design on it, I can then tape it in my journal, you know, write a scripture that I when I'm reading my Bible and then tape it in my whatever day I'm journaling in. So that will be here. And then on this side, um, when you open it up, I'm going to have on a thick acetate plastic. I'm hoping I can find it in my messy craft room that I'm going to wrap washi tape around it. I think you've seen me do that in a previous video, actually for the giveaway, um, that giveaway journal that we made, that I made. Um, and I will put it here. And then I think I'm going to 
add in here a little band in here somewhere to house a couple of pens. That way, no, actually I'm not. I'm going to, not pens, because that'll bulk that up. I decided that, um, make sure that's closed. I'm going to put it right here. So I'm going to put another hole here and then have it hold this pen in the signature because it'll be in between. And here's this journal and then this journal. So it'll, it'll lay right in the center like this. That way, wherever I take it, the pen is going to sit right in between there. Can you see the pen? Yep. So that's where that's going to go. I'll do another hole. So I've already put four holes in my journal, getting it ready for elastic. And so, and then if you hadn't, if I didn't show this in that last video that I made, this is, it was an eight and a half by 11 piece of card craft. Okay. And I, this is the width here is an 11 and I think this is eight inches. Yes. So from the height, I cut off a half an inch. So making this into an eight by uh this hang on this is eight in height and 11 in width so when you fold it up you know naturally it's going to be when it's folded in half it's going to be one two three four one two three four five five and a half okay um because you know if you divide 11 by um two it's going to be um, five and a half. So that's going to be for this journal. And then what I did was when it starts off with a card craft and you know, the card craft is, you know, not thick, but it's thick enough. But once you start covering it with paper, it gets thicker and thicker. So it is a substantial cover. Okay. And, um, so I'll stick this in here. What I want to do today so I made this and this is the same width as this pad. So it's 11 by eight. Okay. And I cut down and my paper that I'm using for those that um, haven't tea stained paper yet um, or afraid to attempt that because I was afraid to attempt it for a very long time. Um, I wanted to keep this kind of stark white um, just because um, I may do some colorful journaling in here. I don't know, using highlighters. I wanted to keep it very white. Um, and so I, and this is only 10 pages here and you fold it in half. Look at all these pages. And then when you go to fill it up, it gets thicker and thicker, right? And, so, and it can be come most um, most usually what happens is that it becomes a gator mouth, but I've left room enough in this journal from the spine for both of these to become a gator mouth. It's not going to be like a super, super gator mouth, but it's going to, it's going to have some, uh, um, as I keep adding things in here, it'll get a little bit thicker, uh, but not enough so that this will not be able to fit. And once actually, and once these are full, I will keep this in a special box of my journals, you know, um, volume one and two, and then just replace them, you know, make some more journals. And the fact that you can get a ream of copy paper at Walmart for $3. Okay. And you can make a lot of journals from those reams. And right now this is just 10 pages that I've used. Okay. So 10 and 10 is 20 pages. But when journalers count the pages that they have in it, they can't count front and back, right? Okay. Um, as it's being single pages. So that's this. Okay. I haven't quite gotten into here yet. And you know, because I have been coming up some, with some other um, ideas. Okay. Now this is a pocket. Okay. 
this won't fit in here because this is kind of wide but I'm just showing you that this is a pocket and it's pretty quite substantial okay that you can hold remember we created a gusset for this so you can hold a little more paper in there um, so I'm going to use this here I was thinking about adding two more notebooks here um, but I'm not quite sure yet it things are just evolving I might end up using um, this and this board here hmm I might put in here some acetate in here for more ephemera pieces. You know, we have those little square ephemera pieces, um, tags and things that you can tuck in here. And then this can house more stickers. Haven't crossed that road, but I, what I want to do today is for those that have never sewn in a signature, I'm going to do that right now. So I'm gonna move this and set this aside. Uh, making a mess here okay so here are the two journals that I want to sew today hold on I need to grab something okay I am I found my little foam thing so I can pierce the holes in this so what I do is I'm gonna grab my pokey tool Oh, let's get my glasses on. Let's set one aside. So I'm going to grab one. Open it up in the center. And what I'm going to do, since we know that this is, let's move that away right here. We know that this is, hang on, hang on, let me grab this this line in here is eight inches right we said the height is eight inches okay so actually let me just grab one because we're going to use this to poke our holes okay so here we go. let me put this right here so we have let me come down eight inches right and so this is pretty simple because it's in even numbers. I want to put one hole here inch go in from the edge from the top and go in one inch. And then over here, I want to go in one inch. And then to find my center, I'm going to count in one, two, three, one, two, three. And this is where I'm going to put the next. So it's going to be at the one inch mark, four inch mark, and then at the four, five, six, seven, seven inch mark, okay? If I'm gonna be reading it out like that. It's like looking at a scoreboard. I want you to score at one inch and I want you to score at um, four inches and then I want you to score at seven, okay? So mark your hole at one inch, four inch, and seven inch, okay? So now when I turn this over like this, and, oops, I got some. Oops, okay. Let me get this tightly secure in here. So I just want to line up, get, push all those papers into the spine. And I, oops, it would help to thread my needle, wouldn't it? There's my little birdie. Hold that down. I'll grab my needle. And I'm thinking about using this rope here so let's see if I can thread this mm. let's see if I can almost Oh, come on. Okay, I'm going to have to cut some of it off. Okay. Let's see if 
if I can get it in this way. Come on. Uh, okay, there we go. You don't have to use anything this thick, okay? So typically when someone says, well, how much thread do you know to use, right? So we usually go like this, one from this edge, and this will be one, two, and then go like maybe three lengths. And that's where we will cut that off. And so now, now that we got this all strung up, we're gonna put our holes in, okay? What I do is I just hold this like this, make sure that I kind of hold this in place like this. And I just take my pokey tool and poke. Oops, I should double that. So there's one. Just kind of push that in there like so. Aye. Aye. A lot of people have this little um, cradle that they use to poke the tool, but I just don't have room like that on my desk. I was thinking on having my husband make me one, but it's like, mm, no, it's just too much. It's another bulky item I do not need in my room, right? So there is that third hole. Okay. And now, just move these things out of the way. Okay. Now I got my needle, my thread. Okay. Haven't done this in a while, let's see. So if I go, I go through the center, yes. Go through the center. And then have this tail right here. So I'm gonna just take this tail and hold it right here, okay? And then I wanna go through the this end, the hole, oops. Let me just stick this back in here. Make sure I've got everything lined up. Ugh. And then bring it through. There we go. That needle come through. I'm gonna hold this string in place. Ugh, bring it. Ugh. Yikes. My Hand strength is just not what it's. Oh, come on. It's just not where it has. You know, when you're young, you have strong hands. Come on. I don't know why. It's mostly through. Just come on now through this paper. Ugh. Ugh. What is going on here? Come on. Come on, string. There we go. Whew. All right. Oh, for you youngins out there, this is going to be very easy because I'm sure... Your hands are going to be a lot stronger than mine. So I want to snug that up. Let's see. You see in here? It's lining up right here. Now a lot of people do it the opposite way. They come in here first and do the stringing so that they have a little tail hanging out. But not me. I'm going to have my tails inside here. So then once you come through. Oh, here's this tail right here. Then you're going to come all the way to this end. And 
Ay. Ooh. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just use the desk to push that needle through. Yeah, it's the thickness of the thread. Oh, we got it. Okay. This. Wait. There we go. Like that. And then just make sure that it's kind of pulled through right out here. Right over here, kind of tug on it to make sure that it's tight. And here's my tail. And then... Turn this over, and then you're going to take your needle, oops, and bring it right through the center. Okay. It's easier said than done, really, truly. I just need to make sure that my tail is keeping that nice and tight so I can enter this journal. Come on. There we go. I'm going to have to use a table to push this thing. Ugh. Well, it's supposed to be easy. It truly is. <laughs> Just, I am not strong anymore. Okay. Let's see. How am I going to do this? I'm going to have to use something to help me push this in. There we go. <laughs> okay, dokie. Oh, and I just kind of make sure that string is on the other side. Okay, I'm going to pull this up tight and then use the table top to push that in and then use this there we go to bring this through and then just undo your string because we're gonna tighten this up anyway just want to make sure these are nice and snug there's a bug in the rug see and I'm pulling on these little tails in here and then I have a string on either side of the center one. And then I'm just going to tie me a knot. I'll probably put one more. And that's the center of your signature. Okay. And there it is. Voila. And then I usually... I'm probably not going to let that hang, so I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to cut it off the same length as this one. Well, actually, I'll probably go this shorter, and then one just a tad bit longer. Okay, like this, with the center of my journal. Well, maybe not, because I don't want anything hanging out. A lot of people do, but for this journal, I don't want anything hanging out so I'm gonna just shorten that up like so okay and then I'll attach something here so where it stays inside the journal okay and there you guys go this is one sewn signature okay let me move this out of the way hang on I'm gonna go and grab something I'll be right back okay so now I'm going to put some elastic inside this journal um, I'm going to show you what I do. This was pretty thin what I ordered here. Yeah, real thin. So what I'm thinking about is doubling it to make it a lot stronger. So let's see. Put this through here. see how much I'm going to need. So this was 
just kind of eyeing it for a second here. If I'm going to have I can grab it. This here. So I'm wanting it to be here and to double it like so. Okay, so how long is this? It's about almost 18 inches long. Okay. Um, so 18 times 2, you know, is 36, right? Okay, so I am going to put this through here. Okay. Take this one. And send it through here. If I can get it to a point. There we go. Okay. What I need to do is just tie this off real quick so it doesn't become unruly for me. If I can do it. <laughs> Simple things, right? Oh, I can do it. I can do it. that up here. Tighten that down. Ugh, ugh. Okay. And here we go. Because this thing was a bit too thin, that's why I doubled it. And then I'm going to tie that off, okay? I will tie this off and I'll fix that. I may just order a thicker one than having to waste this thinner one. Okay, so this is what this looks like, guys. Let's get our sewn-in signature. Just pop this in here, like so. Okay, and there you go. There's one journal down, and then I will sew this off, um, sew this together off camera. But I want you to sh see Let's close this up. There's one journal already inside of there, okay? So imagine the other one sitting. Let's get this journal cover out of the way. Uh, okay, imagine the other one sitting in there. Sitting right next to it, right in there, okay? So you have volume one and volume two. And thank you guys so much. I am now 33 minutes into the video. And thank you. I'm going to end it here. And this is what this is going to look like. And then you close it up. And I'm not sure what the closure yet I want to do. I was going to do magnet. It still could be a magnet. Um, so that's what that looks like, you guys. So when you open it up, you open up this journal. You can remove it. Okay, when you turn your pa your journal pages over, then you have this little interior section. And I think I, I might, you know, make some sort of ephemera holder for the center part. Okay, and then over here, I may just lay down. Well, I was going to do a monthly cascading window. That's what I'm going to do, this window feature. And hmm. you know, I may put eyelets in here. Okay, so it's going to be in here. 
And the reason why I'm thinking is because I might have a pad. Let me just show you some paper. Might have something hanging off this way. So where you can... I don't know. We'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, right? Like this. Or this will be a this and this page will be used as a full calendar like I'll do like six months here and six months here cascading window okay we'll see all right guys so if you have any ideas just give me a holler you know send me a comment and we'll go from there thank you guys for stopping in it's 36 minutes woohoo i almost met the goal of being under 30 minutes okay guys happy crafting and talk to you later bye